Hey, it's Mike, and we're back with another tutorial on generative AI audio. That's right. AI is not just for chatbots. Stable Audio is proving this with their text-to-audio tool, where you can describe the type of music you want to hear and generate a sample of that music. So here they've got a trance beat. Facebook has a similar library called AudioCraft, which is open source and allows you to set this up on your own computer and build your own web applications with text to audio generation. And they have models for generating music as well as sound. In our last tutorial video, we showed you how to set up this library and deploy the out of the box demo, which looks something like this. I'm going to show you how to set up a custom web application where you can do the same thing. And this time, instead of music, we're going to be generating sounds. So let's dive into it. So in the last tutorial, we used music gen. In this one, we're going to use audio gen to generate sound instead of music. And if you scroll down through their documentation on the GitHub repo readme file, you'll see audio gen. And if we go there, there's a little bit of a description on how to implement this model. So we're gonna just literally copy this code and go into our project, which is just a replica of the GitHub repo for AudioCraft. And last time we made this app.py file in the root. And similarly, this time we're gonna create a file in the root and just paste that code. And we'll call this audio gen demo dot py. And to run a Python script, I just type Python and the name of the file. And let's run it and see if this works. Now, this is going to take a little while because it needs to load the model. This is not a small model. Uh, I think it's about a gig and a half. It's their medium model. They do have smaller versions that load faster and larger versions that take longer, but probably produce a higher quality. We're going to be generating files of five seconds. And what we're asking it to generate is what's in this array here. A dog barking, siren of an emergency vehicle, and footsteps in a corridor. It's going to generate these three samples in this loop here. So this IDX is the index of the file being created. The wave is a reference to what the model has generated for that individual sound. It's going to take the default sample rate and it's going to utilize this loudness compressor, which will normalize the audio. So here we go. Our file system now has these three wave files, 0.wave, 1.wave, and 2, representing each of the samples we asked to generate. And if we want to listen to those, there's our dog barking. There's our siren. And there is nothing, apparently. I'm not sure what happened to that one. But you can see our script is working. Now, the next thing we might want to do is let people pass in their own definitions of what they want to hear. And we'll start by just doing that via the command line, running our script, but passing in the descriptions from the command line prompt to simplify things. OK, so the first thing I'll do is just delete these files so we don't get them confused with anything else we generate. The next thing I'm going to want to do is if we're dealing with arguments in Python, we need the arg parse library. So I'm going to say import arg parse. And if we want to see the documentation on that, this is arg parse. The next thing we're going to do is we want to move all of this into a function so that it only happens when we call generate audio. So let's take this code and move it into that function. So now we're instantiating our model right away when the script runs, but this function hasn't yet been called, so we won't actually be generating any samples until we do. You can see this function takes parameter, which is our descriptions. So we want to be able to generate those descriptions from whatever the person passed in via the command line. And to do that, we're going to use this bit of code. And this might be a little bit confusing, but what this says in Python is that if this script is running as a main script, 
if it's not being imported into another script as a sort of module, but being called directly from the command line, then anything we write inside of here will get executed. So next thing we're going to do is create our parser. And we're going to give it a description, generate audio based on descriptions. And then we're going to add an argument that we will accept. And we're going to call that descriptions. And this nargs parameter here is a plus, meaning it's just going to allow us to keep adding descriptions. It's not going to limit the number of descriptions that we can pass in for now. And then we pass this help variable, which if someone were to type help on this library, they would get this bit of helper text to let them know what arguments the script accepts. Now, if you want to understand the arguments a little better, you can look at, say, in the documentation, this nargs and see what it accepts. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to generate the args variable and parse the arguments that came in from the script. And then we're going to pass those to our generate audio function via this generate audio args dot descriptions. And again, this descriptions is what we call this variable here. So let's go ahead and run this here with our arguments and see what happens. And we will generate wind chimes lagging. Again, it's going to load our model, which will take a little while, and then it's going to generate those audio files. So here we see our output generate the zeroth sample. We should probably bump that number up. And we have a zero dot wave file here. And there's our bells clanging. That seems like a pretty good place to stop for this lesson. In the next episode, we're going to set up an HTML front end that can allow users to fill in a form rather than have to use the command line to pass in those descriptions. And we'll set up our backend to do all the hard work and return back the audio files so the user can download them. See you in the next one.